just make sure y'all with me. And I'm gonna do some weird clapping shit that always syncs the audio. Yo, 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 yo. It's your boy Wayne Woods. I'm with the guys, and we have the vibes, and we are here back again at Paradise Studios. And I have a very, 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 two very special guests. But Yert. before oh, <laughs> y'all heard them, y'all heard them. <laughs> if y'all know what that voice is, then y'all already know I am with a great guy, and he has brung one of his artists through to make sure that we get to talk about his latest upcoming project. But let me get into my guys. Cozy. You. Mar. You. I am with my guys and they are ready to hold me down. But like I said, we are here with Riley and Moses. Moses. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Thank How are we doing, you. fellas? Great. I'm doing great. Now, I am so mad because I've been spending all day trying to get this right. We got Moses Mosima. You got it. You got it perfectly. Perfect, 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 perfect. It was worth the time. You got it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it one time for me. Because we were walking out if it was wrong. Ooh. I was ready, bro. I got my car put up on the block. Fellas, I'm glad to have you with me. I'm glad to have you with us, me, and my guys. How we doing today? Great, man. Blessed, man. Very blessed. We dropped downpour tonight, a few hours Just ago. Just dropped that video out now. I know. This this will be a little delayed, but <laughs> <laughs> the day this was shot, downpour dropped a now few you know hours ago. Now you know how it feels ago. when they go on TV, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all right. We can edit it. Can. But once again, I'm so glad to have you guys with us. Um, I've been tapped in with you guys for quite, quite, quite some time. I'm hey, not thank sure if you. you know I've been following you on Twitter for some time. Thank you. Uh, I've recently just tapped in with you, but uh, like I said, I've been watching the things that you guys have been doing, and you have been nothing. Uh-oh. Audio fuck up. You have been nothing but perfect. I feel like, fellas, you've been hitting all angles, TikTok platforms, uh, social media, Instagram, Twitter, everything. I see you literally. Thank you. Everywhere. Thank you. That means a lot because this is difficult. <laughs> yeah. Let's speak to it early on, fellas. Uh, you as an artist, you as the manager that's pushing everything to get it going. What's it like being able to create this content, get it out? Is it exhausting? Is it tiring? What's the vibes? Yeah, to both. <laughs> it's, it's very much a labor of love. Like, I think if we didn't love it, you know. It probably would have been too too much of a headache to even finish. But, you know, because it comes from a real place, like, that's how we always find the drive to do it. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I mean, man, it's, it's a as he said, a labor of love. And it just turns into, like, you got to put in as much effort as you want to see the results. So the harder you're willing to go and sacrifice and whatever that means, the more results you're going to see in the path you choose. Yes, sir. So, like... It it's tough and it, it's draining. It turns into your entire life. Like once this turns full time, and then if you are also trying to manage a full time job, things like that, like life gets very tough, very tough. Now we talk about we talked about earlier pre show, uh, just being on it every day, and like I said, I've seen you every day, and it's all about this. Do I have it right? Cold to say. Yeah, yeah you I want to be sure. Cold to sec. This project that's about to come, um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a heater. Oh, it is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we've been working on it for a long time. It's like probably like a two, maybe three year process that yeah. we've we've put into making this. It's a, it's an experience. Now let's talk about being hands on with this experience. I see you're creating videos, we're renting U-Hauls, we're doing all types of things. I I didn't just hear the conversation. I literally seen all these things happen on Instagram. Who's coming up with the thought process? Is this you telling him what's in his head? You telling him what's in your head? And we just bouncing ideas around. Who's the creative genius? Is this just perfect chemistry? What's the, what's the behind it? That one, yeah. Perfect chemistry. That's that's a pretty good way to summarize it. Like, it's really like our our collective mindset kind of just 
we do me and Riley, we do a lot of brainstorming. We, we'll we, just we sit, there sit for with hours. ideas and just talk. Like I feel like that's that's something that's so underrated in the process of an artist, like being able to just exchange ideas and, and refine them with other artists. And this guy is a he's a manager, but he's also an artist himself. His vision not music as a director. <laughs> Not I've yet. been getting so many Not surprises. Yet. I may have said something I can't so say yet. I've been getting so many surprises. Oh, we got, we got so surprises. Many surprises. Yeah. So many surprises. Yeah. That would have been a, that would have been one for the books. I'm telling you. We dropping it here tonight. <laughs> what if we told you the rollout was for Riley of HBC? I that would fuck me up. All the directing the videos that that oh, would have fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> Last minute type of thing, but yeah, man, it's really about. Um, making the best out of what you have, right? Like a, a, a lot of the the process behind these videos and, and a lot of what this project became was out of necessity. Yeah. It's rare that you have everything that you need. So, you know, we did everything we could with what we had. Yeah, and you see us renting trailers and building rain yeah, machines sir. and all of that, but the reality of that is that Running that trailer costs under fifty dollars for the day. Like the budget, like think about the result of if we wanted to go book a space or something like that, it very easily could turn into a fifteen hundred dollar shoot day. Easily. easily yeah. Yes, sir. if not more. I know the vibes. And we've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> it was really just a matter of like, oh man, like how do we do the most with the least and still make it dope? And that was where we just focused. The real focus was camera quality. Yes, sir. So, like, we used the black magic. That's yes, our secret. Sir. There's our there's our secret. I saw you ask about it on Twitter. Who got a black magic? Who yeah. got a motherfucking black magic? Now, did you have to go out, buy one, return the motherfucker after you used it, or did somebody come in the clutch? Uh, no. Uh, our friend Jabari Rogers, uh, yes, his, his ad is at Wolf's Food. Um, he's a seasoned videographer, and we happened to just meet him at the right time. Wow. And so it was this perfect blending of we had these really creative ideas and then we met somebody that was just readily available and super down for everything we were talking about. And so it was a perfect, perfect mesh, really. Wow. It's all timing. The universe it throws everybody in situations together at the right place, the right time. Now, understanding that we need to make the most out of what we have. When the idea came across that says, hey, I'm Riley and I'm going to start doing the videos. Because he's been doing the videos and the content for a while. This is not something that's new. From the rib. You have been elevating yeah. your game. Thank you. And that's what's new. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been paying attention. When things first started and Riley's like, yo, I'm doing the content. What's the thoughts of, as an artist? Are you really looking? Yo, bro, I'm thinking we're going to hire him and hire that. What's the mindset of, yo, I got you? Well, you know, it for 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 it to become what it has today, we've gone through <laughs> a lot of iterations of trying to figure out the formula, finding the right people. I think that has been the part we've learned from the most, but the part that's also cost us the most, the part that's given us the most headache. Yeah. But it was necessary. You know, we needed to, um, just like we were talking about earlier, YouTube University, you know what I mean? Like, for as much as you reach out to others, you also need to invest that same energy in yourself. Yes, sir. And I think we had to grow individually as people, as artists, to be able to get to the point where we trusted ourselves enough to execute the vision. Because it wasn't always that, you know? When you're first starting out, like, you believe in your vision, but you don't always believe in your capability to execute it. And I think part of what we did with the cul-de-sac rollout over these past couple of years is really sharpen those knives, like sharpen that skill set how to do the rollout, how to do the videos, you know? Because also the more that you learn personally, the easier it is to work with others. That's, what, that's another important thing that I've learned. You yeah. really have to know what you want when you collaborate with something. Artists, you know, don't let the collaborator decide what it's going to be, you know? The, the cosign, the name, isn't what makes it a great product. It's your collective vision together. Mm. And you being able to, to elaborate that, that's a skill in and of itself, you know, being able to um, articulate, articulate your, your vision. One thing that was really helpful for us is we started getting into writing down treatments. Yeah, mm. yeah, that was huge. Really like systemizing our process, figuring out like, 
how to really capitalize on our time. Because one of the hardest things shooting a video when you don't have a vision or you don't have like at least an itinerary for the day is keeping track of the time. Yeah. It's really easy to lose a lot of time. Same thing with recording in the studio. Like it's really all about intention. The better you understand what you're trying to do, the easier it is to elaborate your vision. I want to say you are speaking right to me, right to me. It's hitting here. Um, very often I try to find what's the right balance between uh, do I want to pay this guy? Do I want to do it myself? Am I capable? I mean, you see I edit the podcast, so yes, I have the equipment. We have these thoughts and sometimes we just need to execute. My great friend Eli said, we know what we need to do. We mm-hmm. often know what we do. More than likely, we know what we need to do. It's just about actually getting to it. Now, one thing that I want to get to, Riley, my good friend. Yes, sir. Not only are you hands-on with this artist, but you're hands-on with multiple artists. Uh, artists of all kinds. Yeah. Uh, how is it having this patience? We we said this is not an easy process. This is every day. And it's every day with multiple people. Yeah. Uh, for those out here trying to do the same thing you're doing, uh, getting into the same endeavors that you're doing, uh, can you just speak to them? What can they do to, you know, enhance their daily activities? What can they do to... Uh, put their focus in the right uh, activities? Uh, There's so many answers to this, but I would think (laughs) the simple one and the one that would make the most sense is to focus on your mental health. Because if you're not right in the head, you can't do anything. How, How would I be able to help any of them in any type of way if my mind wasn't right? So that's a big focus of it all, is like you just gotta keep your own mind sane enough that you can continue to move through this. This is a tough industry. It's hard to stay sane through it. And I I guess like what I would justify as sane is probably not (laughs) to to people that are normal, regular working class people. Like it's an unusual level of stress, but that's it. It's really just the management of your own mind. And if you can keep yourself level because When you're working with other people, there's always going to be some kind of monkey wrench thrown in. Like there's going to be something that you're going to trip over that's another person's problem. So you got to make sure that your own problems are good enough that you can even handle that somebody else's issues. That's the hardest part. Now, you said it with such swiftness, with such class. Thank you. But is it that easy? No, hell no. <laughs> hell no, it's not easy. <laughs> That's the hardest part. What like, does a day of running around for you two looks like getting done? There's a lot of things first. that could be. Um, <laughs> it really depends like what mode we're in. Like, right now. Let's, you know what? Let's say about a month ago, preparing to roll all of this stuff up as we're right in the beginning, because we've been at it for a while. Now that is, the preparation has just finished. Now it's time to put it out there. What's the day like? What, are we getting up? Are we having breakfast? Talking about what we post and what it's looking like? Well, recently, a lot of our time has been centered around shooting these videos for the yeah. project. And so it's been a lot of like, late slash early phone calls to really cement the ideas before we even get the camera out. That's so important with, with, yeah. with shooting video is like really, really understanding not only like what am I shooting, but what am I saying? That comes through in a way that like people don't always realize, like the more you understand what you're trying to say, the easier it is to express it. But a lot of planning, um, Usually we, we try to start pretty early with like getting to set and getting everything set up. But, you know, but that that's mostly what it's been. A lot of editing sessions as well, just kind of sitting down, looking at what we shot and trying yeah. to figure out how to make it into, you know, that idea in our head. Yeah. Now that's... turning up with the video editor so quickly. Uh... How long have you been at this? I mean, you just got the camera. 
well, access to the camera. So are you like shoot, that's only with that camera. Like I've been shooting videos. I started at like eleven or twelve years old. And on a, on a handheld camera, like a cassette camera, mm. which I actually use, <laughs> I use now to shoot videos. Like if you see any of the footage in some of our other videos, it looks like old, like that, like VHS style looking footage. It's on that first camera I ever touched. Mm. So I started on my grandma's camera shooting skate videos with my friends and then slowly just kind of moved up and always was editing. And so since, yeah, since I was 11, 12 years old, I was always shooting and editing, and then so my skills just got sharp, and now I just have the right tools. So, like, up until this year, I shot everything with my phone, a GoPro, and that camera, the VHS camera. So, and that was all the videos you saw up until this year. I'm, you even talking about promo vids, like, uh, yeah. when you uh, got the power drill and on to the... Oh, yeah, that was shot on my phone. What's the, the that was, toilet thing? You that was shot on this phone thing. right yeah, here. Yeah, bathroom. <laughs> yeah, bathroom. shout out to Obi and... Who's smoking trip. in the bathroom out now? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, But, yeah, it was... All of that was shot on my phone, really. And then, so, like, I got... When I did it, I bought, like, it was the 10... Or the, the X Max, whatever, iPhone. <laughs> but at the time, like two years ago, whatever was at the top. And I was like, all right, I'm going to buy this because it's 4K. And like any other camera that's like $1,000 that's 4K isn't that good. But an iPhone is crazy. And the stabilization is nuts. <laughs> so I just went with that. And then I just took myself down to bare bones, like made it as difficult as possible quality wise. So I had to make it my editing nice. Now, with cul-de-sac and, like, different was the first video we shot with the Black Magic. And then I just got to work with all of this high-quality footage where I've already honed my skills with, with, with nothing. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> speaking on cul-de-sac, you have to be one of our first R&B acts on our platform. Hey. <laughs> Honored. Give it up, give it up, give it up. How does it feel to be in your genre of music? I am very new to your genre of music on the platform. Uh, I know I threw up the uh, concert footage of different festivals. Uh, what is it like being an R&B guy, not with all the hype, not with all the extras, um, trying to make his way through the industry and shake and move? Well, I think first and foremost, I, I and we've always made art from a place of love for the craft, you know? We're fans first. So everything else is an extra. The fact I'm even able to do this, be on these podcasts, have people tell me they listen to my music. I was going to be making music regardless. I was going to be making art regardless. We were going to be doing something. So it, it really all circles back to that. Like, as long as I have an opportunity to keep doing this, like, that's what fuels me. I don't think about too much more, honestly. Now, Opportunity. I seen you had the opportunity to put on a very great, I want to call it a virtual show, uh, the Toyota at the Crib. Yeah, hey. at the Crib Fest. Shouts out at the Crib Fest. Yes, Shout sir. out One Music Festival. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out. Thank you. Yusuf Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Great performance you put on. Uh, thank you. What is it like being able to perform live, had the people behind you rocking out? I mean, I understand how hard it is just to put simple things together. Um, but to be able to have a complete show, multiple camera angles, like you said, you make music out of love and the universe returns love to you. How did you feel mm. in that moment performing? I, it, was, it was beautiful, man. It was a very vindicating moment. Um... You know, because we do put so much of ourselves into this, like financially, time-wise, energy-wise, like it is really nice to to have opportunities like that that we've always dreamed of. And I think it is precisely because people recognize that we do do this from a place of love. Um, it all comes full circle. So the only reason I was able to pull that off is because of like how long we've been working together and how we've like 
the same way Riley was saying, refine his skills as a director, we've refined our skills as a team as well in being able to execute stuff like this. The things that we're doing now, we're only doing because we're capable of it. Um, something I always say to him is like, you know, when things, you know, there, there have been times where we've had opportunities we didn't necessarily feel ready for in the moment. But I always just try and tell him something that was told to me that's been helpful. Like, you wouldn't have the opportunity if you weren't ready for it. That's you know? a fact. It's there, <laughs> it's there for you. You know, you, sometimes there are moments in your life you have to live up to something. And, you know, I just look at every opportunity as something to live up to. <laughs> Dropping gems tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It's the woods, baby. My dog, my dog was feeling it. I had to pause it for a minute and let my dog get right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you these guys are some great guys. I told you these guys are some great guys. That's I told cool. you. Now, speaking of great guys, I just wanted a moment to touch on uh, people I would from the outside looking in think that you consider as brothers, yet yeah, HBC uh, collective. Yeah. Uh, the genius behind it, I'm going to play dumb for this one so I can let you guys explain it in your own way. Uh, how was it started? When did it get started? Uh, oh, let's go. Yeah, I'm going to let Riley this. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's Let's our bust it down for us. I'm the HBC historian. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was started in a basement long ago. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go. Let's give it to us. <laughs> so, when did we started in 2012? So, we've been at this almost a decade. Yes, sir. And we were juniors in high school. And basically, we found a friend whose dad was pretty relaxed and like would let people come and chill at the crib, and there'd be like 10 people there regularly. And it was cool. So that was nice the cool spot. Yeah, it was the spot. Yeah. Nice little vibe. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and this would be I Hate You, She. This would have been 11th grade. And so we we were always friends throughout all of school. And, well, we weren't at first. We started off not being friends. But we fought. What school? High school or middle school? Middle school. That we met in middle school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Damn. <laughs> yeah, it go we we go back far, but um so basically we went to watch the throne uh here in Philly and we were front row, got to shake Kanye's hand. Hey. She'd rap with Hove. Like hey. it was crazy. And from that moment it was like we got to get into this industry. Like we're going to do something so Sheed was going to be the rapper and I was going <laughs> to be the producer. That was how I tried to come in, and I started trying to make beats on FL. Like they sounded wild, and <laughs> <laughs> were they trash? They, were they? Were they? Uh, were, yeah, were they what's yeah. the genre? Would you kind of? Yeah. Might gotta run this back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta hear some of those. The beats. first beat I made was I took uh, Kanye when he cut off Taylor Swift, and there was a point in there where he says like, uh, Beyonce had the greatest video of all time, and I chopped up the all time. That was my first beat. <laughs> I can only imagine. All it was time. just like all, 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 all time. <laughs> just all, 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 all time. Yeah, basically that. So that didn't work out for too long. But I was always okay. shooting. I was always filming everything too. And then we met uh, Wobi, and Wobi. <laughs> we met Wobi. She looked at him and said, "You look like you rap." And he was like, I do. <laughs> so after school, we met up and uh, it was like a little cypher. It was like three people. And, oh, okay. And so we'll be <laughs> rap. And then we ended up going back to our friend Ben's crib. That was what turned into the basement that we built the studio in. And <laughs> that pretty much was it. Because him and Moses had been rapping and making music for years since they were early. Yeah, we met, we met in middle school. and. It, funny, funny enough, like uh, how she said that Wobi looked like he rapped. The first time, true story, first time I saw this guy, this was in middle school, he was wearing a Got Rap t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that was why. 
but I never forgot that. I probably had the same thought. But yeah, we we all go way back. HBC is really it's really a family. Oh man! So from there, we really just started all. So that was eleventh grade. We started doing like weird shows at like Voltage Lounge, fucking Afton. Fuck you, Afton. Um, <laughs> they used to book like these showcases with like thirty acts on the bill. You guys make them sell uh, tickets. And, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And you sit there for five hours. Yeah. Yes, but, sir. <laughs> so we were doing that. Yes, sir. That was, that was how we did our first show yeah. at Voltage. Yes, sir. You live <laughs> and, and you learn. So we were doing that. We were always making music. Like all of our like stuff that's on a lot of it's on like Sheeds soundcloud page like a lot of our early stuff is on there um but yeah we basically just started making records in this basement turned a little like uh, closet into a booth and then set up a desk next to it with some speakers and a computer started recording and then we all graduated high school and they uh Wobi and moses they ended up going to new york to st john's yeah, right. St. John's University. <clears throat> Damn! Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't finish though, and that's and that was. But we went. Pivotal, yeah. pivotal, pivotal to the story. Smart enough to no, make that it, it was definitely. Them. Well, you it was you know what I mean. Pivotal to the story, yeah. <laughs> um, and then me and another member of HBC Gomez moved out to Cali. And then Sheed went to school. I don't remember exactly where he went. And basically, we all went to school. And <laughs> I, did, I didn't, but I went, I went and worked. <laughs> and then oh, it was like 2015. We were all like, fuck this shit. And so they would be two years into school. I'm two years yeah. into living in Cali. And like, fuck. All right. Yeah, fuck it. I'm moving back. And then... Just decided to really put a stamp in. We moved into our friend, same person who had the original basement then. <laughs> he was now going to Drexel. Yes, and sir. so we all moved into his <laughs> studio, one bedroom apartment, <laughs> did the same shit, all the same equipment was still around. <laughs> this, is tw- this is 2015. Then we just got back to work. Everybody came back and then kept getting kicked out of houses like for a few years until we got our own and then we've had our own house that we turned into a studio media lab screen printing all of that our turned a crib into a full creative warehouse basically since 2017 so yeah pretty much just came back to us all regrouping back in philly and getting to work and that's been what everybody has been able to see oh man yeah can we give it up for the (laughs) girls Thank you. Thank you. Facts. 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 Oh, man. It was to do the dream, man. Uh, that's it. It was meant to be. <laughs> yeah. It was meant to be. Now, <clears throat> in my notes I had, I was going to ask, well, what made you join? But clearly, y'all Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> Now that people know. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about this down poor video. But. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to get you just your whole vibe of it. Just listening to your music, that is my vibe. A lot of people Thank who you. know my music know that I really get into that vibe. Um, what was just your whole vision behind uh, the song? Uh, what was the vibes like in the stew? Was you with your guys? Was it like a party in there? What was the vibe? Yeah, so really that song specifically, um, it, it comes actually from a from a breakup. Mm. Yeah, so like listening to that song, funny enough, like it, it actually brings back a lot of memories for me. Um, it was a difficult time in my life and like, I was just, I had so much pent up at that time. You know, I had been working on songs for the project. I had a lot of ideas. I was feeling really stuck, not only with the music, but with life. And I I just said to myself, like, I need something to wash all this away. And like the idea just came to me of like a downpour. Like what is, I need a respite, just something to just take me out of this. Um, God knows I've been waiting on a downpour to wash my pain away. 
And it, it's, a, it's a cathartic song. It's a song about, you know, finding that release that you need when you're going through something difficult. And, I, you know, I, I, I think my goal was that the song was to hopefully help someone that was feeling the same things I felt when I was writing it. That's, that's really my goal with a lot of the music. Like, I, I feel like when I first started, like, I think a lot of us as artists, we start out very, like, aspirationally. We look at, like, our favorite artists and try to make something just like that. But you reach a point where you've been doing what you're doing long enough that you just start speaking through the craft. Whatever you're going through at that time, you know, whatever experiences that need to be spoken that you can't speak on in your real life come out through the music. So Downpour was a really cathartic song in that way. And with the video, we kind of just tried to capture the, the, the vibe and the feeling of the song. Like he was saying, like, we, we learned a lot. We, via YouTube University, we learned how to build, how to build a, a rain machine. And I was oh, going to was ask fun. you, yeah. how is it when a song like that with clearly so much emotional attachment uh, you create and then you have somebody like your brother who goes the extra mile and helps you build a whole ring machine just so we can pull off the aesthetics? Yeah. We clearly talked about family, but... Of course, just let us know how was it just seeing the end result and just being able to look at your guys, look at your brothers and knowing you had a support fully. Just what's the feeling? It's a it's a beautiful feeling. It's a it's a feeling to live for. Like I the Moses Mosima that people see, like the brand, the music, everything, it's not just me, you know? Like there's a team of people behind me that are my family in a very literal way that help make this what it is. And so, you know, the downpour video wouldn't be a thing. Cul-de-sac wouldn't be a thing. It's, we are all byproduct of our influences and the people that are in our lives. Like they say that you're, you're like the byproduct of the five people you spend the most time with. And in that way, we've all sharpened each other's skills and, and help each other become the artists that we are and what we do. So it's a symbiotic. Right? We all feed each other. The energy I get from Tawobi, the energy I get from I Hate You, She, the energy I get from Lord Trippy, it all feeds my creativity and my drive to keep doing this. Because, you know, there is a lot that goes into it. But instead of, like, going through it, like, I try to go through it. You know, I try to, instead of going through it, I try to live through it, so to speak. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, Riley... You put the goddamn holes and all that shit together. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> What's that vibe like? <laughs> Who climbed the goddamn tree? Hey yo. I saw it on the Instagram story. I ain't need to wait <laughs> until the TikTok came out. Uh, bro, it's hectic. It's like it's trying to draw it every part of your brain to think about how do we do this because there's two options we knew we wanted this to be in the rain <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's either you go out and shoot in the rain which now creates a real problem with the equipment <laughs> um and yeah like the other thing here's a tip for all the videographers out there you need to backlight rain for it to show up so if you notice in the back of the downpour video, there's a light in the background pointing at the back of Moses, but that lets you see the rain. If you don't do that, you don't see the rain. These are all things I had to figure out along the way. It's just like going insane every night watching videos of how to do things, like DIY project people. Like, <laughs> have you shot? Have you guys tried to attempt the video and you didn't do the light? backdrop so no, you didn't we, see the rain at no, first no i was well aware that that had to okay. happen before we got there <laughs> yeah. it, it sounded like hold up yeah maybe he ain't <laughs> i watched a bunch of people on youtube that had already had that happen to them cool, cool. yeah cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean it's really just research and the hardest part about research and youtube university is you got to know what you're looking for because if you don't know what you're looking for you can't find it you got to know the right words to put in to be able to find what you want. And sometimes it's not even as simple as that. You got to type in some other shit to get you to the place you want. 
but I know the feeling. Yeah, it's it's tough, and you, sometimes like there's not there's some you could YouTube it now, but there's not a whole lot of videos on building a rain machine. There was like seven <laughs> that were solid. <laughs> He knows the numbers. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, that told me that he went through all yeah. <laughs> I, I watched every one I could find because I was trying to figure it out. And every one of them did it different. Mm. And the one we did, like one person, one of those videos, and I think it had one of the least amount of views, did it similar to how we did it. We took a backdrop stand with a hose, and there's this type of hose. I can't remember what it's called, but it already has holes in the entire hose. Okay. Yeah, it's for like sprinkler systems, but I was going to ask you who cut the holes in the. No, hose? bro. We like we were about of, to. We were about to. Yeah, that's we a were whole sure situation. ready to do that. That what's crazy is that whole shoot was probably like two and a half hours. Hey. Which isn't that long compared At all. to, and probably an hour of it was setting it up, and I didn't even know how I was going to set it up till I got there. It get like that, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to connect this backdrop stand to the tree with a zip tie. And I'm going to run this hose into the tree with zip ties. And that's how it's going to stay up. And then, boom, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, they really MacGyvered the shit out of that video. Sometimes it's luck, too. like Because I didn't know. If, it could have went absolutely left. And it would have just been a waste of a night. I Going into it, that's what I expected. I was like, we're going to shoot something. But I don't know if it's going to be what I wanted. <laughs> we gonna get it in tonight i didn't know if it was gonna work yeah i didn't know but it did sometimes you just get pleasantly surprised by your preparation now i have a very important question because i'm a podcast man and it's my job to be a little bit update with what's going on in our industry here what happened to the hbc podcast oh man hit big dan <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing them back. I mean, COVID happened. And oh, okay. we, we shot, like, everything and recorded at Rec Philly. And Rec was closed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was closed for a lot of time there. And that just kind of messed up the rhythm okay. of doing it. So we're going to get back to it. I, I can't wait. Because I love doing this. Like, I love doing podcasts. It's one of my favorite mediums because you get to get so much of a message out. You get to really talk about things in depth. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's now, unfiltered. One thing we got to talk about a little in depth is your hit record different. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said that before? It looked like it took you for a minute. Hit record different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's still kind of new to me, as you can tell. Yeah, that... It's funny, like, some, like sometimes we try and... We do so much trying to figure out like what the formula is for success and how things are supposed to work out. But, you know, a lot of the times like they take you by surprise. And I really feel like that's how it was with different. Yeah. Like like he was saying, like the first time we shot with the with the black magic and with Jabari, like we didn't know we didn't have expectations of that song doing to we didn't have expectations of uh, of it to do what it did. We kind of just executed and. Turn out better than we thought. We thought, you know, you know, we like this. This is dope. That's always the 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 most important thing first. And everything else that happened was a byproduct of that. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to be the hit. It wasn't. Like, like in it, our minds, it, like we weren't prepared for that. You y'all didn't think that was the one? No. No. Y'all wasn't in the studio wasn't like even, this we, is the because we we were we were working on the this album rollout. Yeah. That record. Was like, All I right, mean, that's cool. This is a great record. Let's put it out. That was really yeah, the idea. It was, was like. A throwaway. Oh, man. We, sh- we shot the video kind of on a your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we talk about that on the podcast? The best songs are the only ways. The ones that you sleep on, it's like, whatever. Yeah. You're Those are the ones that people no, will yeah, always bro, bro, thinking bro. About. You don't know the song. I don't even know the song, but I know the <laughs> Bro. <that. laughs> it's not a throwaway. Okay. <laughs> it's not a throw and away. now i don't feel that way i it, don't feel that it's way it's not yeah, a throw away the, agree the people really validated that song for me it, it's a go up <laughs> yo for real we weren't even gonna put a video out like it was yeah. just supposed to, to drop as a single and that's what yusuf told us shouts out yusuf he really <laughs> yeah, was he, like he was like yusuf you guys was... have to shoot a video for everything 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we yeah. talked about this on the pod or not, if we got the footage, if we got the audio. But Raleigh is my podcast manager for those who don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was the pre-pod. <laughs> only taking me. He's only taking my podcast work on nobody else at all. <laughs> it came back to me and I just had to make sure I got it out there on camera so y'all know it's a wrap. I got that. Wow. Now I'm back to it. <laughs> Different. You hit right here. <clears throat> I mean... I now know what it takes. It's like everything correlated from the video. The video sounded like the song. And the video is a visual. Like when I see the visual, it it gave me everything the song was supposed to be. That's beautiful. Now, did you was it just a stroke of luck where it's like yes. it took place in the snow? Yeah. Like Yeah, yeah. I mean the shoot was kind of, <laughs> the, honestly the shoot was kind of miserable too. Like we didn't write the treatment. <laughs> We wrote a treatment and it did not involve snow. <clears throat> yeah. At all. Okay. It just snowed. <laughs> yeah. And we like, shot that video like a week before the song came out. And it was this has to come out with the song. So <laughs> just a very, very last minute kind of thing. Like Yeah. Artists, no matter what happens, do what you gonna do. You gotta shoot a video with rain, shoot that yeah, motherfucker. Just, yeah, just do just it anyway. Do it. <laughs> You know, you know when you have like a day planned out and there's like that moment where something goes wrong and you're like, oh yeah, this whole day is about to be chalked. There's a decision you have to make in that moment where you can save it or you can just be like, oh, I'm going to take the day off. Bet. But if you decide, fuck it, we're doing it anyway, most of the time that's where the magic happens. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. It's another one. We got gems for days. Now... <clears throat> One thing I want to touch on, something that always, always, always been something I wanted to talk about, Static Shop. Hey. Hey. Y'all were able to get a Mid-Vessel video, and yes, I sir. love it. Shout I out Mid-Vessel. Love it. They are like, to me, the guys. It's a lot of guys around, Yo. but they are the guys Yo. to me. Like, yeah, they're, building they're heavy. sets. They're heavy with it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. How was it working with the guys? How many of them came out? Oh, uh, man. What was the... They're really, <laughs> they're really some masterminds, man. Like, they just, like, <laughs> when they put their mind to something, like, they really know how to execute a vision. Like, they know how to come to you. Like, how they really work, like, they, they will really sit with your song and come to you with a, with a full vision and really sit with you and, and help you execute that. And... I want you know, that. like that, like that collaboration was very much like a lesson for us too. Like <clears throat> we took away like lessons on just watching the way they worked. Like they even brought out a whole uh, steady cam operator, Colin. Shout out Colin. Um, the shots that you're seeing where we're like coming up off the ground and it looks like we're it's kind of floating. He had a whole rig. It's a heavy, heavy steady cam rig that he was lugging well, around the whole day. To your chest, like some real movie type shit. So like. Yeah, Mid Vessel, they're they're really going crazy, and you know we were really lucky to to work with them for that project for Absent. Yes, yeah, sir. And a big like a big part of all that was the amount of preparation they did. Like they went to the location, but before we shot, and sent pictures of like where. <laughs> well, it was in Valley Forge. Yeah, I Valley love Forge it. Park. It was in Valley Forge. I love it. Um, and they went and like sent pictures of like we're gonna do this here. We're going to do this here. So, like, we had a vision of, like, oh, okay, this is what this is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And you hear us sitting here telling you how we shoot these other videos. And so when someone's that prepared, it's like, whoa, this is crazy. Because this is almost more than what we do. And then we showed up, and there was, like, ten people there. Yeah, they had a whole crew. Mid-Vessels 3. And then there was a whole group. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I never felt like, and as soon as I pulled up. (laughs) <laughs> th- that was my minivan that was in the, the shots. Yes. So sir. as soon as I pulled up, they were strapping the, the suction cup for the, the mounted <laughs> camera on the hood. I'm like, this is wild. I'm like, this is crazy. This is how it should feel. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man. I know the vibes. I know the vibes. But oh, support man. them. Yeah. Yeah. Support absolutely. them. Yeah. P- support them. Please. I got to get with y'all. Yes, sir. Now, is there anything else you guys would like to shed light on? 
anything you guys that may have coming. I know your rollout is far from over. I know your rollout is far from over. And I see how he looking at you like, yeah, you know. <laughs> It's good. It's up. Yeah, I mean, there, there's still a lot on the way. There's still a lot of surprises. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone that's been supporting the release of Cul de Sac. Uh, I'm I'm thank only you. able to do what I do because of all the support. You know what I mean? Like it, it's been a lot of like natural, organic love from the people that have helped us do this. So I just want to say uh, thank you for that. First of all, you guys really keep us going. We've got a few more videos on the way. Uh, I'm also going to be Performing my first in-person festival in mm -hmm. October, Philly Music Fest. Yes, sir. So, you know, I hope some of you guys will be coming out because I'm going to be, you know, performing a lot of the songs from Call to Sack for the first time with a full band. Mm. So we've, we've yes, been getting sir. ready for that. A lot of stuff in the works. And not only for me, there's a lot from HBC that's coming in the next coming months. It's... Oh, yeah. Birdman yeah. hand rope. <laughs> Bird, <laughs> <Big Birdman. laughs> so... Before I let you gentlemen go, it's one thing that I must ask, and it's one thing that I must address for my platform purposes. It's a gatekeeper situation going around that needs to be addressed. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> Can you let us know? Is this true? Are Both. you a gatekeeper of some of kind? Do you hold the keys? Oh, man, look. Yes. You got the keys. <laughs> You got the keys. Yes. <laughs> and just for the audio purposes, Mar, Cozy, I thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. The support is amazing. I thank you guys. I thank you guys. For uh, support in the platform. Wait, real quick before we head out. Yes, sir. I do one more shout out. Yes, sir. Of course. Shouts out Paradise. This is this yeah, is this is Paradise. really home. Like, so thankful to everybody here. We've made hits in this room. You'll hear them soon. Um, but we made it like we made like close to a hundred records in this building. Like, we've done a lot of work in this building, and so like being here doing this podcast, like. It just feels like being at home. Hey. So like, right. Huge shouts out to Paradise. Support them as well. Huge shout out to Paradise. And thank you. Thank you. Because yes, for real, <laughs> you're one of the people, like we need people like you that are doing this because we don't have enough media in this city at all. Like the reason, <laughs> here's a little bit of a tangent. But yes, sir, no, we are. <laughs> the reason we, we, we don't have a whole lot of access here in the city is because we don't have any business really. So, like, we don't have any labels here besides HBC. HBC. So, <laughs> and no, there's others. Sound of death row. <laughs> um, but we don't have enough. Like, we don't have any major industry here at all. And we don't have any media, major, major media here at all either. So the key to doing that is for all of us to take it on ourselves and do it. Yes, so sir. our end... We're starting a record label <laughs> to yes, help sir. out just so we can try and help sign talent in Philadelphia. But what we need is more people like you doing exactly what you're doing because we need the media. Because with all this music that's coming out, we need the platform to show it off and for the artists and the people behind it to be able to talk about it. That's how we shed a light on all of this. So thank you, bro. Yes, thank you for the platform, man. A even exchange, a universal exchange of energy. One thing that I'm always strong in, one thing that I always believe in. Uh, we hope to continue this. I know there's a bunch of other guys that uh, is way more than qualified to be here. So definitely continue to reach out. I'll definitely continue to support. And let's get the fuck out of here. Guys. <laughs>